another uh, webinar uh, by the ORF. Uh, today we have the uh, Deputy Commissioner of Srinagar with us, Mr. Shahid Chaudhary, uh, who is uh, an intrepid uh, uh, bureaucrat who has been on the forefront of the war against the virus. Uh, and he, along with his administration, have done some remarkable work in Srinagar. Uh, so uh, welcome, Mr. Chaudhary, uh, to ORF's webinar. Uh, let me just start by you. both congratulating you as well as uh, asking you, uh, congratulating you for uh, you know, being one of the districts which were uh, nominated by the government of India uh, for best practices, uh, held out as an example to all other districts in the country. Uh, can you uh, just fill us in on uh, what were the best practices that you shared in that meeting in which uh, Shinnagar district was held up as an example? Uh, in fact, the uh, uh, dividend of uh, early starter, being early starter was the uh, first thing we started very early in the month of Feb when uh, a large number of students uh, undergoing their medical training in various Chinese cities had to come back. So we started preparing for it. Uh, there was a robust information, education, and communication campaign with the public, keeping them aware of coronavirus pandemic. A month later, uh, we started this 100% screening of all incoming arrivals, be it international airport, train, buses coming into Delhi. Uh, then the numbers started increasing. We had people coming from various countries which were affected. So after 100% screening, we started taking people into quarantine. Our first case which turned positive uh, in Srinagar was on 18th March. So by that time, we had around 1,500 people already quarantined. So initially, there was a lot of controversy that why we are taking such a large number of people into quarantine, but the results were visible in two or three weeks. Uh, so our first issue was that a lot of people were uh, hiding their travel history. So we developed some applications also, mobile app, where Crowdsourcing was one of the main pillars. We got a lot of information from neighbors or other persons who knew about the travel history. Then uh, self-information was also uh, one of the options available. Then a lot of other practices like tracking of uh, uh, those persons who were coming from different countries and did not uh, share their travel history locally. Uh, then bank transaction in other countries. So a lot of uh, tools were uh, taken into account and we uh, uh, Around, we found around 889 people who did not share their travel history, out of which many turned out to be positive. And fortunately, we had taken in quarantine uh, well in time. A uh, second important thing was our uh, robust surveillance system. We had around uh, 10 red zones in the district in the first two weeks. So we did 100% sampling, and a large number of cases were coming from sampling and we were able to contain. A month later, we had just 85 cases, out of which 20 were those persons who reached here on, on 26th March on some religious uh, uh, pilgrimage or other uh, their visits. So all of them were quarantined on arrival and all of them turned positive. So uh, that was a high alert. Then our testing capacities went very high. We started with just 40 to 50 tests per day. Right now, we are we're doing beyond 3,000 a day. So a lot of things were there. And then another thing is that uh, when you are into such a long lockdown, it's not uh, going to be sustained uh, uh, for much longer time. So there were two things. One, uh, in the backdrop of this lockdown, you have all the seamless services available, essential commodities, essential services. So we uh, started working at 25 to 30% of our staff, uh, making everything available at doorsteps. Even ration distribution was done at doorsteps, LBG distribution, vegetable, milk, all under precautions and strict enforcement. We had around uh, 15,000 policemen Policemen daily uh, on the ground enforcing this lockdown. So, what is the situation right now? Because uh, at least in the rest of the country, what we are seeing is uh, that despite the lockdown, uh, maybe the infections have not spread as much as they would have with the lockdown, uh, uh, without the lockdown. So, but um, even now, the cases are rising. What is the current situation in Shirinagar and what are new steps you are taking to ensure uh, that this does not spiral out of control? So first thing I was uh, about to mention is that we utilize this lockdown period to build our capacities effectively. Uh, like when we started, nobody knew the concept of quarantine in public. Today you uh, hear everyone speaking about quarantine and asking questions about 
number of days testing is taking uh, questioning administration about delay in testing so no it's in public and that's a success also so we utilize this period for creation of facilities we have done we have established more than 10000 bedded capacity of covid wellness centers quarantine facilities stand alone uh, which were built from scratch in last two months uh, then additional machineries and, and laboratory added so on that that front we have worked very well second is that this lockdown is not permanent there has to be an exit so for last more than 15 days we have been working on the exit model uh, one is economic activity part and second is livelihood so like i'll just cite one example we have around 200 odd makers in srinagar so it's very important that uh, these precautions and other basic concepts of hygiene containment social distancing they are into minds and uh, uh, business of everyone in the city be it a layman be, be it a, uh, a doctor uh, an administrator or anybody uh, doing any business so we have started training all those people about the practices to be adopted from tomorrow we are working on opening of those uh, bakery shops we have already done with vegetable vendors we tested around 600 of them after testing negative we allow the home delivery so uh, russian delivery in lpg as i already said we uh, reached out to almost almost 3.20 lakh families so on those fronts we are working so that when we open up the society at large is uh, prepared for it as far as uh, tests numbers are concerned so we are not worried like i said in a month in first month we had 85 cases out of which 20 were outsiders those who were quarantined on arrival right now we have 135 odd cases but numbers rising is a good thing also that uh, we have a robust tracking system we are contact tracing every person who is in touch with a positive case we are tracing all such people who evaded disclosure of travel history like uh, at least 30 cases in srinagar are attributed to recent uh, illicit travel history so uh, then again Uh, a large number of people are coming up so it's very important that you test everyone who is coming who is reaching in srinagar and after test report you are allowing them to mix into public it's very important to stamp out the virus in last 5 days alone we have received 4500 people in srinagar so we are working on that front as well mr chaudhry uh, you know twice uh, in the course of this conversation you said that this lockdown cannot be sustained for much longer um, are we expecting uh, or should we expect Uh, that say come uh, the 17th or the 18th uh, of may <clears throat> we will not see lockdown 4.0 but we will see opening up 1.0 uh, is that the trajectory in which uh, we are or you are hinting uh, we are going to move in shrinagar at least uh, see first thing is that whatever is being decided at national level uh, there is a clause or a saving that these uh, uh, guidelines do not apply to districts which are having a large number of containment zones in srinagar we had around 28 containment zones or red zones uh, as called in common parlance so out of which around 10 deserve to be downgraded there have been no cases for a month or so but again as i said that we have to be over cautious at, at this stage because the good work uh, of last two months two months should not uh, be wasted in any case so we are uh, taking again a graded approach like we went into lockdown not suddenly but in a graded manner over a period of 20 days we started with the closure of primary schools then higher secondary and high schools colleges slowly moving to public transport then business establishment and around uh, 18th and 19th uh, march we uh, announced this complete shutdown and complete lockdown in srinagar likewise when we are opening up it will not be an abrupt fall like i said we started with vegetable delivery milk delivery was already there medicine was already there bakers are being opened so uh, we uh, have around 25 administrative zones in srinagar so we have just uh, done a huge exercise of opening two to three shops in one zone stand alone shops in uh, and in small markets so opening will not be abrupt say on 17th or 20th as far as srinagar is concerned so like we moved into lockdown in a graded approach the exit will be graded and after observing uh, the response system uh, like the number of cases coming up if, if we have at least 10000 people coming into srinagar in next 3 to 4 days alone so call has to be taken that once you have completed 100% testing of uh, all fresh arrivals you have completed 100% testing in red zones after that you will be uh, opening up those areas so certainly it will it will be graded it may uh, take much longer time i guess okay so uh, out of these 10000 people you are talking about most of them would be people who are coming from outside the state uh, do you also have restrictions on inter district movement 
uh, people who are coming from other districts of Jammu and Kashmir uh, into Srinagar? Or is that movement free, but this is only this, this checking and this monitoring will be only for people who are coming from outside the union territory? Uh, see, uh, Srinagar is a densely populated uh, city. And we have a large number of cases in many districts of North Kashmir and South Kashmir. So this again was another challenge that you safeguard the city from uh, any such intermixing or spread of uh, infection from those areas because we are catering to a lot of issues uh, for which other districts are dependent on, dependent on Srinagar. Like thousands of employees uh, go to other districts from Srinagar, they come back in the evening and we have to uh, do a shifting that somebody from red zone should not move out or come inside. So that has been a very regulated affair. And a large number of districts depend on Srinagar for their supply. So we have been uh, very cautious about this, the number of trucks moving out, all the drivers and the support staff tested and tried. So uh, the inter-district movement has been under observation and under surveillance and strictly as per inter-district movement passes. So we have uh, the national highway passing uh, from Srinagar, so that is in outskirts of city. That is, to some extent, a minor exception. Otherwise, all the movement within and outside Srinagar is regulated by movement passes. Only those persons who are on duty, uh, as far as COVID response is concerned, or who are uh, a part of essential service delivery. So we have been over cautious with that as far as interdistrict movement is concerned. Mr. Jolji, if I can ask you about um, an issue which is causing a lot of concern to many people uh, within Srinagar, not only Srinagar, actually all of the union territory. Uh, it's about the education. Uh, because uh, since the constitutional changes last year, there, have been, there has been a prolonged lockdown. Uh, after that, uh, you know, things started opening up. Uh, children started going back to school. Educational institutions started opening until the virus hit. Uh, so again, you are in a lockdown state. So education is clearly suffering. Uh, what is the uh, solution which the administration has to ensure that the children do not suffer, the education does not suffer? That is one part of the question. The other part of the question is related to uh, the internet. Uh, Certainly. This is a very, a very serious issue. No, if I, if I might just uh, add the second part also, then you can take both of them together. You know, about the internet, because in many other parts of the country, uh, you know, education is going online, schools are trying to reach out to children, holding classes online. Uh, but with the kind of speeds which are existing inside Srinagar right now, uh, or in other parts of the Union Territory, uh, I don't think it's going to be possible. Is there any kind of a via media that the administration has thought of how to balance the requirements of security with the requirements of society? Can some kind of a balance be drawn up? Do you have any ideas or solutions for that? So if you can just answer both on the education as well as in this, the, the, you know, the slow speeds of internet, uh, if, if you can just tell us something. On yes, yes, sir. Uh, as far as Srinagar is concerned, our schools opened uh, after a long winter break and uh, everything was going normal before this uh, uh, pandemic knocked our doors. Uh, so schools were closed as all other institutions as well. Uh, so all the schools, uh, in, be it in government or private sector, as far as Srinagar district is concerned, they moved to online classes also. Certainly, there is no alternative to the actual uh, classroom education, but efforts have been taken both by the government and the private stakeholders. In Srinagar district, uh, for which I am responsible, uh, the government, the private sector constitutes around 85% of total enrollment and 15% is the government. So on both the fronts, be it government or private, we have been working unitedly. We uh, utilize resources for online classes, online assignments. And as far as the, particularly the government is concerned, we, we have roped in online classes with Doordashan uh, information uh, uh, department. But as far as internet speed is concerned, we have, uh, have 2G speed available and we are working on that. So certainly uh, the research scholars and others using videos and high speed download, that uh, remains a concern. But I think uh, it has to be seen in larger security context. So, as and when the things improve, since the matter is also before the Honorable Supreme Court, so it will not be uh, wise on my part to comment on that. But certainly, uh, as far as the problem uh, being faced by the students are concerned, we are addressing them locally in Srinagar district. Thank you very much, Mr. Chaudhary. It is a pleasure talking to you and um, more power to your elbow and uh, to your team.
uh, to continue the good fight thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you very much